<laughs> yeah, I'm looking pretty fresh. Guys, it is Casey from the future again. How's the past? On a serious note, I hope you guys understand the logistics of this whole season. And especially since we did the Land of the Free project in Oregon, and then we hunted for, I don't know, two weeks. Then we're going to hunt with Born and Raised tomorrow. But what I'm trying to say is we tried to line up best season yet in land of the free 2.0 so every day that we're with them our videos coincide with their videos well there was a little mix up they are only filming the hunting days and we're filming it's every day bro so there was two days of travel in between oregon and when we meet up to go to montana so the best way we could do this to keep the days the same was for them to hold back one day, today, Born and Raised will not have a video up, and we are putting two videos, two days, together. And so today, on Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving, by the way, my son just fell asleep on the couch. But you are getting two episodes of The Best Season Yet combined into one, and so tomorrow, our video will line up with Born and Raised. Enjoy. <laughs> well, good morning, guys. I just got an order from Mountain Ops. It's a great way to start the day. This is their conservation stack. So they did a bunch of their different flavors, a bunch of their different products, all kinds of different organizations that they are partnershiped with, like Elk Foundation, Mule Deer, Mule Deer Foundation, 2%. So this is a little goodie bag. Check it out. Came with a Mule Deer shaker bottle, a sticker, and an all-access pass. What is this? Operation Conservation is a Mountain Ops initiative to help raise awareness about the importance of conservation. Our mission is to protect the future of public lands for the use of hunters, anglers, and outdoor enthusiasts. We contribute our time along with a portion of every sale towards conservation causes, assisting in national and global e efforts to preserve our rights as sportsmen. We invite you to join us to help support conservation partners to make this possible. Visit mountainops.com forward slash conservation today to learn how you can make a difference. I love working with Mountain Ops. I love their products. The Harbertson Brothers were my friends before they started Mountain Ops and they give back to local community stuff all the time, charities and conservation a ton. Huge thanks to Mountain Ops for sending me that. If you guys wanna get involved, I just read everything, go to mountainops.com, check their website, and uh, also just try their products. This is a pretty cool little label. This is a Green Apple Ignite. These products are for everybody, okay? A lot of people get the misconception that, hey, you have to go work out, you have to be a gym rat, gym rat, or whatever to use them. These supplements are for anybody and everybody who wants more energy and wants to feel better and just enjoy life a little better. They do promote health and happiness. That's all it's about. I would challenge anybody who hasn't already tried Mountain Ops, go to the website, give it a try. If you want something to just start with, I think the two best products are Enduro and Ignite. This morning, I'm going to start with... Yeti. So what do I got here on the table already? I got peach Yeti. So I'm going to go ahead and do some peach Yeti. Today is September 9th. And if you were to tell me that I'd just be at home on a Sunday, September 9th, going to the gym, I probably wouldn't believe you. I would think by now that the elk hunting would be picking up. But as you saw, if you watched yesterday's video, it's pretty slow where we were. And there's some wildfires surrounding uh, the area we hunt, which is just basically make glassing and stuff and visibility very low quality so I'm just gonna do my normal routine guys I'm gonna go to the gym I'm gonna use this day to clean up all the gear that I had at camp because it is all dirty and dusty wash my truck refill the Yeti with ice and food regroup edit videos and then get on my way and head head back out there to hunt elk again well what do you know peach Yeti and the peaches are looking pretty good out here let's bust that open and give it a try I love fresh fruit always have nice and juicy on the inside definitely ripe and there's no bugs around the seed so 
that's a win. Hmm. Not much flavor, to be honest. Let's try the peach yeti. Way more peachy. Might have used a couple days, but it's not bad. What is the date today? Guys, it is September 9th, and it is time for me to get to start getting ready for the next adventure. And that adventure is we're going to be headed to Montana with Cody and Trevor from Born and Raised. It will be me and Brian and uh, Ty Stubblefield, if you guys remember him. Currently working for BHA. I used to be part of the Born and Raised crew. You guys, we are fairly new to the whole backpacking lifestyle. We do it once a year. It's four to five days up in the Wasatch Front. And it's fun, I enjoy it. The way things are sounding is uh, this hunt could go both ways. The spot we're gonna hunt, we've been told that there are bulls not far from the from the roads, mile or two, so we won't need to backpack. But if not, and we can't get into the elk, we are going to backpack in for five to seven days. And like I said, we we're fairly new to it. So the whole food thing is what really throws me off. I would not consider myself a picky eater by any means, but I really don't enjoy a lot of the backpacking food, the dehydrated food. I am very excited. I've told you guys this before, but Mountain Ops is trying a new product. It's some dehydrated food. Creamy beef stroganoff, creamy chicken alfredo, pineapple chicken with rice, cheesy meat lasagna. So those are going to be my meals for seven days. And then I have this other stuff. Let me know what I've been, what I'm missing here. But I got some fruit roll-ups, kind of a healthier treat. Um, great for sugars when I need them, carbs. I got some uh, dried mango. Mango is probably my favorite fruit. Uh, we got some beef sticks. I don't know. It sounded like beef sticks would be great in the backcountry. The very most important part, wet wipes. Got some beef sticks. I've got some dehydrated apples, uh, almonds, wasabi, and soy, of course. A little bit of trail mix. And then tortillas. I'm not anticipating those are going to be terrible, but if they are, you can really make any food taste decent with a tortilla. Cheese, which I'm sure is supposed to be refrigerated, but I've carried cheese in my backpack for a couple weeks before and still eaten it. We got the tuna packs. And one of the big surprises this year is I took some Spam singles, these bad boys, with me up into the high country. And after I got tired of tuna, I uh, fried one of these up at night and it was amazing. It was probably the best thing I had. So I'm taking plenty of those. So I'm curious if there's something, if you guys are into the backpacking world and, and you like to hunt that way or just backpack, what is something that you always has? What, what, what is one of your staples for your backpack? I really haven't found it yet. I would say probably the tuna packs is what I've been carrying around the most. I try to keep it healthy, but at the same time, it has a lot of protein in there. Not too many calories, which isn't good, but I get full off one of those. So I'm going to divide these up into seven days worth of of um, food bags so every day I can just grab one bag and I know I'll have enough food for the whole day and so I'm going to divide all this up into seven bags and uh, hopefully I have enough hopefully I don't starve I don't think I will starve there's a possibility very strong possibility another little tech tip or I like to call it I can't really claim this tip this is a, this would be a not a Casey tip but a Cody Cone tip if you don't want to pack around this you know the package itself which is pretty heavy and typically, I can never eat through a whole one of these. These are two servings, I believe. So what you do is take the contents out and you split it in half, and then that's your dinner. Doesn't look like a lot, but that's probably, uh, you add one cup of boiling water to that, and uh, you don't put it in this bag. I have a little pot, a little cup that I carry around with me that will hold like two cups. And so I will put that in the cup, put a, one cup of boiling water in there, and that will be a perfect meal for me. And then that is one day of food. I have no idea how much it weighs. Probably way too much. I think that's enough calories and enough goodness to get me through one day. Here's the true question. How much does it all weigh? Got my wife's little scale here. Okay, zero ounces, milliliters. Let's go pounds. So zero. Ten pounds, or eight point six pounds, eight point five pounds. Is that right? Forty-seven hundred grams. Eight point nine pounds. Seven days of food. Seems like a lot. It's over a pound a day. Do I eat a pound of food a day. I'm sure I do. Well, that's what we're going with. So hopefully it's enough. 
Hopefully I'm not taking too much. But if you take too much food in the backcountry, you become uh, friends because you can give out some of your food to other people that didn't take enough. And then they're like, hey, I want to be your friend. That's the only reason I have friends. Oh, the joys, the joys of unpacking. Oh, everything is just so dusty. It's time to get all this stuff unloaded, cleaned up, and then reloaded. Sometimes I wonder why I clean it all up just to go get it dirty the next day. But I kind of like to have a fresh start. Clean all my gear, wash my truck, vacuum out the inside. That way, the next time I go hunting, I got everything organized. I know exactly where everything is because I'll put it where it belongs. By the way, I still have this giant box of camera equipment that I'm supposed to be using. I decided I have a problem. My problem is with new gear, new equipment. For whatever reason, I hate using new stuff because it's brand new. I want to take care of it. I don't want it to get dirty. So that especially goes with new hunting gear and new camera gear. You think that's probably a stupid thing to think, but I don't know why I'm like that. Like I get new camera gear and I'm so hesitant to go use it even though I know I need to use it come on like a new backpack I've always used this now I'm using that one when I had to put that thing on my four-wheeler and I knew it was gonna get dusty it bothered the crap out of me but this one I've used it for years it was gonna get dusty I don't care it's already used and dirty so I decided that's my problem Casey confirmed it so this vlog camera I'm using is new once I start to use it pack it in my pocket pack it in my backpack the lens is gonna get dusty just like the other one and even though I know that I still decide not to use it even though the other one is so dusty that everybody's like great camera man clean the dust off your lens and it's all internal that's what sucks about using them they get murdered they get dirty so fast but that's my issue like look this guy my old vlog cam could care less where it goes this new one Gotta keep it clean. Gotta clean it all. Yeti's getting clean. Got the camp chef. That'll dry out really quick in the sun. Get those off really, really good. Even the decoy looks a little poverty. Better spray her down. Let's do this. Thing is so dusty it's turning into mud. Look at that. All right, much better. Not a full detail, but a lot cleaner than it was. All right guys, well, I'm home and I'm doing a quick turn so I can get packed up, head north to go pick up Casey. So we're getting ready to do the food prep. I'm sure Casey's already talked about this today because I know he's doing the same thing right now at his house. But we are doing a backcountry style hunt with the guys that are born and raised. So it's a little different, a little out of our comfort zone. Haven't done a lot of them. Certainly not counting calories or ounces as we probably should. However, we're gonna do our best. So here's what I'm gonna show you, kind of what I like, what I've run, like at our deer camp and some other places. For breakfast, I'm gonna likely split these in half in a Ziploc bag with a little bit of that action. Snack-wise, I like these Stingers. A couple different flavors, they've been pretty solid. These Pro Bar meals are pretty hearty. We got this out of the uh, Backcountry Fuel Box, but I tried these with uh, my buddy Chael in Oregon, and they're actually really good. Beef jerky, beef sticks, some coffee flavors, got some Mountain Ops and Duro. These are the Trail Packs, which are uh, just a real easy Thing to throw in the old pack. Probably gonna do some mixed nuts along with some banana chips and then maybe some granola as well. Also came out of the old backcountry fuel box. We're gonna try these. Then we're also gonna try the new Mountain Ops prototypes that Casey has with him. Big fan of the Tillamook cheese. 
kind of little singlets. And then I'm gonna pre-make some salami sandwiches, a little beef or sweet hot mustard, and some of this jalapeno cream cheese on these little tiny sandwich slims. Little thin guys. So kind of have a variety of breakfast, snack, lunch, and then dinner. My go-to if you watch our other hunts, a little tuna with top ramen. And then I still have these as an option as well, plus the Mountain Ops stuff. So that's what I'm working with. I'm gonna get building and just pre-make every single day. So it'll all just be in a gallon Ziploc bag. And it's convenient because you can just grab the bag and you're good for the day. I'm gonna get packing, probably shoot my bow tonight. Make sure I have all my gear situated. Never know what the weather's gonna be in Montana. So I kind of brought a lot of options to pick from. And then we'll likely be going out for a couple days at a time. If it did happen to get super cold or something, we could head back to our base camp, get the proper layers, and then head back out. Anyways, fun time of the year and uh, time to get the food packed. Ah. Let's see what we got here. I got a package from First Light. I ordered a few items. Let me show you what I got. I personally like the fusion pattern. It's my favorite. It was starting to get really cold in my tree stand and I started to use my pullover pants and I wanted a pair that matched uh, my camo. These are the puffy pants in fusion. So just like that, what I like about them is that there's two zippers so you can slide them on over your boots. You don't have to take your boots off because you can just open up the legs, slip them on real quick, throw them over. They're great for sitting in a stand. They're awesome just to throw in your backpack if you're glassing a lot and it's super cold or just maybe riding a four-wheeler first thing in the morning. So that's the, uh, the puffy pants and this is the puffy coat. Now, the puffy coat I had before, which I ran for a couple years, did not have the hood. And I really wanted the puffy coat with the hood. So just ordered one of those again, fusion. That'll be great as the, uh, the season gets cooler and cooler. And then what else did I order? I needed another hoodie. I got the Klamath hoodie. Oh yeah. So I've got one of these already as well. And I just liked it so much that I decided to get another one. This is a size large. Both tops are actually size large. But uh, the Klamath hoodie, Man, it's like a medium weight, super stretchy, very comfortable. Uh, the nice hood, I love First Light's hood. They're actually like full coverage hoods that aren't big and baggy. So they'll stay over your hat. Quarter zip, well, I'd say half zip or so. But anyways, those are the only three pieces that I ordered. Super excited to get those. This is everything I unloaded from my truck. Most of my clothing was still clean, so I still have that, but this bin, had pretty much cookware, rod heads, all this kind of stuff right here. Basically did one load of laundry, I'll just throw that back in there. Binoculars, phone scope, vlog camera, the old one, and uh, all the other camera equipment. And then of course my broad heads, my Hoyt bow, and some field tip arrows for target practice, and then the XO Mountain backpack. For those of you who have followed me for years, you've seen that I've only worn Horn Hunter backpacks. Love them, I've used them a ton. I've carried out a lot of packs full of meat and a lot of packs full of sheds, and I really enjoy the pack. I'm really liking this EXO pack as well, to be honest with you. The one thing I love probably the most is the waist belt. Um, I have a pretty small waist. When I'm really lean, it's about 30 inches. If I'm a little, I don't know, when I gain a little bit, bit of weight, I'm about 32, 33. So I like that it has a small waist and the foam is actually fitted, so it just makes it super comfortable. Um, so I'm really liking that pack got the new hats that I showed you before gonna take some pictures Got to put those on the website tomorrow and then yeah clean up this gigantic mess get back on the laptop Do all the files edit all the videos and then get ready to just go out and do it all again I'll probably go out to uh, Idaho Sometime midweek and then Bridget will catch up with me. If not, we might just go together on Thursday So we'll have to wait and see that's the plan at some point I really really need to get back to high country deer camp to hunt deer and uh, To break down camp and pack it all out So I'll probably pick a day where I can ride the pedal bike up there and just take the Rambo bike So that's a game plan for me. That's pretty much a day just uh, clean up chores and doing all that kind of stuff so anyways thanks for watching guys hopefully 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 you guys are having a great season good luck to everyone who's out there again please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already if you guys want to check out any of our merchandise like the new hats i showed you just go to gethushin.com we always have links in the description box and we also have links to all our partners and discount codes if you guys want to save some money on some of the gear we use so maybe that should be helpful hope you guys have a good night 
We'll see you bright and early in the morning. Well, we're moving on to the office life. Even got my old PC uh, tower firing up so I can go through, through some files on that thing. But we got a couple things that are super, super exciting that are going on with Hush outside of what we do hunting and what we do on the mountain. And uh, that's working with our buddy, Joel Pilcher, who is a wildlife artist. I'm sure you guys have seen some of his stuff on our website. He uh, designed some, some new pieces and some new uh, graphics for our apparel line. So let me show you real quick what he's got going on. These are some concept ideas he had for um, patches. So this would be like a leather patch. This is the fireball skull that he, he like hand drew that. Um, on a pad like a mouse pad type of thing. These are like some leather patch options This would be an embroidered patch So a little less detail than the top because the embroidery mach machine seems to bleed into each other If it's not super sharp. So woven patches are a little different woven patches can be a lot tighter and with a lot more detail so these with the American flag I don't think we'll move forward with that design, but I just love the antlers that he did. And then that's another mock-up that he did as well. So let me so show you some shirt options that he designed. So here are some t-shirt ideas using that same graphic. So this would be like a charcoal shirt with a black print. I'm not sure. I might actually do a charcoal shirt with a light gray print just so it pops a little more. But that same graphic also looks good on black. He sent me one in like an army green that I really like. I think would be a cool one. But honestly, I think that will be the new best-selling shirt. Either in gray or like a heather gray or maybe like an army green. So super excited to get those going. I've been sitting on the computer mostly doing that type of stuff. Just trying to get samples going so we can, you know, see and fill it. And then another project we're doing with Joel through this entire month of September, his original charcoal fireball piece. So he took the original, which let me show you that real quick. It's it turned out great. This is it right here. He scanned it into his computer system. And then what he does is we're gonna auction the original. We're gonna give all the proceeds to Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, make a huge donation. And then Joel will create reprints and sell them for $64.99 on his website. So this is just a mock-up, but that's how the shirt will look once it's printed. It loses a little bit of its quality. You kind of have to uh, digitize it, and then he put a border around it, and then the hush block letters, and we're just gonna throw the fireball on the back. So all of us are super excited to get the that going. We're gonna start that this Thursday, and it's gonna run through the end of September. So you'll have three ways to get involved to help support Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, and here's how it's gonna work. The charcoal print, the original, will be sold to the highest bidder on auction. 100% of that money is going to Elk Foundation. Then when you buy a reprint, 10% of that money is going to go back to conservation. And when you buy a t-shirt, $5 is going back to Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. So with your guys' help, we're going to be able to donate, I think, thousands of dollars to the Elk Foundation, which is really cool. And honestly, it's such a great feeling to be able to use our platforms, YouTube videos, Facebook and Instagram and everything that we have to give back. The hunting community has been so great to us. You guys have been so great to us. And we always will will use our platforms for positive and we'll always give back. So once that project is done, what we want to do with Joel is actually a mule deer version. And we have a really cool idea for the charcoal piece we want to have him do for us. And then I think when we do that one, we'll probably donate the money respectively to the mule deer foundation. So we're an open book guys. We have a lot of different partners when it comes to conservation groups. I know it's hard sometimes we'll donate to a certain one we'll get a few people that are kind of upset that, you know think we should have gave some money to other organizations that they support so guys we're wide open we want to support all the different organizations especially the ones that have a, a, a good message and want to preserve public lands and the animals that we love to hunt and we enjoy so much being that the fireballs and elk we thought it'd be perfect to go to elk foundation hopefully you guys jump on board and get involved we appreciate it if you do and that's what i'm doing for mid-afternoon It is, uh, to my knowledge, September 10th still, and we are making haystacks. You guys don't know what a haystack is? I feel sorry for you. I didn't know what a haystack was until a couple of years ago, and when, actually, two, last year, we went out to do Land of the Free 1.0, and they kept talking about these haystack things. Come to find out, it's a taco salad. The Oregon boys call it a haystack, real fancy-like. We got some rosy hamburger. 
We got some beans. These are not a necessity, but just a added pleasure. And then we've got chips. Those guys doing the chips. Tortillas for my kids. They probably won't do a haystack. We got cheese. We got all sorts of salsas, but it's the lettuce and it's the toppings. The lettuce, olives, avocados, green onions, tomatoes. My wonderful neighbor Kevin just brought me some homemade salsa that we're probably going to try. Anyway, those guys will be here in probably 25 minutes. Brian will be here in 25 minutes. We're gonna eat, we're gonna get our packs loaded, and then super early tomorrow, we're gonna head to Montana, where we will come to a trailhead and put those packs upon our backs and go back and find some elk. I'm really excited about this. Brian, introduce yourself, what, we, what, what we're doing. Uh, I believe we're having haystacks or burritos. This is a very nice setup though. Just, I just, I'm that guy, showed up for dinner. We are getting fueled up before we have a complete yard sale in the uh, Hush North office of gear. And the Born and Raised guys are probably gonna tell us what we do not <laughs> need to pack. And there probably will be some laughing. Less is more, <laughs> less is more. Cody, I have a hard time with that. I know. I'm a just... little bit of an overpacker. <laughs> Can we just talk about the Mohawk right now? <laughs> this is Mohawk? This was, was, a, this was supposed to be the luck changer in Colorado. Yeah, now what? Um, just rolling it on into Montana. <laughs> so guys, born and raised showed up, and uh, in classic fashion, Trevor is going to show us how to make a proper haystack. The first thing you do, step one, you hold on, I want to pause for a minute so you guys can get out a pen and paper. Okay, first step, chips. They don't have to be blue or purple or whatever color these are. But you, you put some chips on your plate and you smash them. Step two, you don't have to kill the game. However, it does taste better. A good, healthy amount of burger. Step three, the cheese. This can be any blend of cheese you'd like. This is the Mexican style blend. Perfect. This is the infamous recipe from my mother. Step four. Oh, thanks, buddy. Winston's, Winston's gonna help, help us. Can I get a little bit more of that, buddy? As much lettuce as you'd like to add to make it look healthier. Step five, the tomatoes. This adds some delicious crunch and some freshness. Step six, step seven. And, thank you, step, don't tell anyone, Winston, okay, we'll keep it a secret, don't tell your mom. Now for the toppings. Great job, buddy. Now the toppings, they vary by the person. I like spicy, and I like ranch. Do you like ranch? Sweet. You think you can help me with this? I believe in you. Let's shake it first, okay? Give it a good shake. Okay, that's okay. That's a little excessive. Now, what are we gonna do? Okay. Do we just pour it on here? Yeah. I believe in you. Your parents don't, but I do. Yes. Yes. Okay, don't celebrate it. I did bring fresh salsa from Coquille. It's freshly made. And we had salsa fresh from the neighbors. Kevo came through. Thanks, Kev. We're gonna throw some on there, too. And this? Oh, yeah, a little bit of that, too, bud. I told you I like some spice. Yeah, give it a good shake. Yeah, a good shake. Okay. A, a dab will do you. Yep. Yep. And that, my friends, is the haystack. Some key steps. When you put the hamburger on, you must put the cheese on top so it melts. That's a key step. Other than that, steps can vary. Enjoy. All right, guys. So we are just eating dinner. That was a really in-depth tutorial on a haystack, which I appreciate. Nice. Was that too much? Nice. Nine steps. No, it was good. You guys enjoy that. Now you know. Guys, we we're getting ready. We leave tomorrow super early, 5 a.m. The guys just showed up from or or Colorado, and then uh, Brian showed up, and we got the whole fam here. We're gonna eat some dinner. We're gonna pack some bags. We're gonna get ready, and uh, we are gonna be in Montana at the trailhead tomorrow. I just want to say, Cody, I'm very excited about this. Dude, I cannot wait. We are doing a true backpack hunt with some of the guys that know how to backpack hunt the very best. Not the best. Just 
yeah. real, the best that I know. Well, they're decent at it anyway, so we'll see what happens. All right, guys, it is 11 p.m. Need to get ready for bed, but I've made some progress on cleaning. You can see a little bit of a difference, I'm sure. Except for this mess. Just got all my new camera equipment out and I wanted to run you through it and show you what we got. I know it's a mess, but let's uh, let's go through this a little bit. So I got a new Rode mic. There's the box it was in. There's the directions about charging it. This is the original wind mic that was on it, but I, we also got a dead cat for it. So this is it right here. This runs on AA batteries and also runs on an internal battery or a rechargeable battery pack, I should say. So it's plugged into USB right now charging. And then let me show you the body. So this is the Sony 6500. This is the body for it right here. I'm yet to even put a lens on it. So we got two lenses for each 6500 we bought. We got this one right here, the long lens. This is the EPZ 18 to 105 millimeter. That should be great for, I mean, pretty much anything. And it could zoom in quite a bit, so it'd be great for some kill shots, rifle kill shots, or just long distance filming. Pancake lens, which is right here. I'm gonna bust that open and put it on. It's the Sony NEX 16 to 50. This is a great vlogging lens um, for up close stuff like, you know, putting the camera in your face and vlogging. Filters, 58 millimeter. BMAC just stopped by today and got me clear filters. These are mostly to protect the original lens so we don't scratch or dirty those. That seems to be our number one issue is just getting dirt inside the lens internally. Like you guys know that my footage off my G7X is just a total joke. That's why I'm vlogging with this new one. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in there, but there's all kinds of dust particles and it just makes it almost impossible to get decent footage. New SD card, cleaning kit. We're trying to keep this stuff clean. That's for the lens, lens cloth. And I did get like a snap-on attachment for my backpack. It goes right on my shoulder strap and I already took that out. So there's a lot of garbage here. We got some extra batteries. That's about it. That plus this uh, Sony vlog cam. This is a Sony RX100. I think it takes a great picture, great video quality. The only thing I don't like about it is the microphone on the outside really catches the wind pretty bad. So I need to put like a dead cat style thing over the top of it, but it's got two imports and they're split a right and a left. And it's gonna be hard to cover those without tampering with the flash mechanisms and stuff. I keep saying this, but the next time I shoot some video, maybe it might be out of the 6500. Hopefully you guys can see a big difference in some of the video that Casey and BMAC are shooting. That's pretty much what Logan's been shooting with the entire time. I just need to overcome my fear of getting it dirty and breaking it and ruining it because this stuff's expensive. When I get a new camera, I just hesitate to use it because I beat the crap out of them. Anyways guys, that's it for me. Hope you guys had a good night. We'll see you in the morning. Please subscribe to the channel like usual. It really helps us out. I know a lot of the views on our channel are coming from people who are not subscribed. That's not a big deal, but if you guys would uh, subscribe to the channel, means a lot to us. We'll keep plugging these videos out for you one day at a time. So we'll see you tomorrow.